Hi, and welcome to the second season of Things That Matter. I'm Brian Broderson, and we are uh, really looking forward to this new season. We're excited, and the format for this season will be just slightly different than last season. Um, this season, we'll be having uh, a number of interviews that I will be conducting, and then occasionally I will have a host here in the studio with me, and we'll be uh, talking about various things that matter, uh, regarding the church, regarding the culture, the relationship between the two, and all of those things. So really looking forward to it. We're going to start off the season with a couple of bonus videos. A few years back, I had the privilege of interviewing uh, both uh, Dr. Ravi Zacharias and Dr. John Lennox. And so we're going to start the season by uh, showing those video interviews that I did and I think you're really going to be blessed and encouraged. Even though they're a couple years old, everything is obviously still extremely relevant. So um, I I'm sure you'll be encouraged by that. And then we've got a number of interviews uh, that we will be presenting. Uh, I had the privilege of interviewing um, Dr. Randy Alcorn recently, uh, Dr. Christopher Ewan, uh, Larry Taunton, the author of the book on Christopher Hitchens. And so we're excited about bringing those to you in a number of other interviews that uh, we'll be doing in the days ahead. So glad you're tuning in and want to encourage you just to get the word out, to take advantage of social media. Uh, find us at calvarychapel.com, backtobasicsradio.com. We've got the podcast. Get it out on Twitter and just as far and wide as we can and uh, pray that you'll be blessed by this new season of Things That Matter. Well, Robbie, it's so great to have you with us again. And it's been a while, and I'm delighted to be back, Brian. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it, and telling everybody, get out here. You got, you got to come and listen to this guy. Um, just, just you know, I, years ago I read your book. Um, I, I think it's now called uh, "Can Men Live Without God." I right. think it had a, a different title earlier right. on. Maybe did it? There were there was a different one which was called a shattered visage, that, which changed to the yeah. real face of atheism. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I read both of them actually. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And so my question is, because you've been dealing with the subject of atheism for so yeah. many years, um, what's changed since you wrote those books with um, the atheism and, and in relation to how Christians are, are confronted with it and, and have to deal with it today? It's a good question, Brian. Nothing in the arguments have changed. Right. Nothing in the evidences have changed. Yeah. No fresh data to muster to defend naturalism. But I think the stridency and the capacity to disseminate these thoughts with yeah. the modern communication method, it seems to go viral. Yeah. And I think like sort of a political type uh, venom, it's become so hostile yeah. and so adversarial. Right. Uh, if a person is atheistic or non-theistic or agnostic and wishes to dialogue intelligently or graciously, of course we can do it. Yeah. But this kind of a clenched fist, let's evict yeah. every other worldview that believes in a transcendent reality, yeah. that has changed. Yeah. And now they've got sort of a mascot in a handful of people, you know, the, the Dawkins, the Dennets, and so on, yeah. and the uh, uh, writers that are even from, from North America and then Hitchens came on yeah, the scene and right. of course he's passed away, uh, Sam Harris. Yeah. So they've got these plurality of voices that are you know, fighting yeah. it with an intensity of passion almost yeah. like anti-theistic yeah. uh, evangelists of yeah. my quote, except there's no good news in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they have the fervor of the uh, most intense evangelists. That's right, they? Yeah. that's right. So has your in, in your dealings with them, because you're still addressing this issue. I see, I follow you on Twitter, so right. you're all over the planet. You're in universities yeah. all the time. You're speaking to uh, large groups of people. Um, what, what's the response nowadays in comparison to what it was in I previous I think I would say, if anything, we are just drawing big, bigger crowds yeah. on the university campus. You know, I was at UCLA yeah. in January. Place was packed, overflow yeah. crowd. I was just a uh, short while ago in Dartmouth in the famous Spalding Auditorium, they said for the first time in its history did it ever have a packed out audience for a religious theme. It was on the theme of tolerance. We experienced the same at Yale mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. 
and all of the big name I'm uh, shortly within a week I will be at Johns Hopkins you know yeah. two weeks from now actually yeah. and they're expecting a packed audit auditorium the best way to answer your question is this one of the trustees at Yale looked at somebody next to him on a Thursday night while we we're speaking overflow crowd and he said I don't understand it what are these kids and people doing on a Thursday night to listen to a subject on the defense of the person of Jesus Christ and yeah. his teaching? And he happened to say it to a friend of mine who leaned over and said to him, do you think it's because you've left their souls empty? Yeah, wow. I think that was the best response. Yeah, That's good response. what I'm noticing. There's yeah. an there's a vacuum. Yeah. And PSO students are coming. Yeah. When we were at uh, Arizona State, we had uh, 9,000. Yeah, John amazing. Lennox and myself yeah. at Clemson, we had 7,000. Yeah. These are weeknight yeah. audiences. So the opportunity is there. Yeah. You have to be wise and careful, but astute in your thinking. Yeah, yeah. So with, say, for example, the faculty at these universities, are mm -hmm. you, I mean, obviously there's some Christian faculty right. and you're probably connected right. there. Are, are you seeing any breakthrough with any of the more atheistic professors? Any Anything where it looks like maybe they're wanting to rethink some Every of this stuff, now or? and then, mm -hmm. not that common, Brian. You know, yeah. I wish I could say it's very common. Yeah. The faculty of today were trained with the radical liberalism of 20, 30 years ago. You yeah. know, they are the anti-establishment types. They yeah. want to, well, if you're politically conservative, they want to attack you. If you're religiously conservative, they want yeah. to attack you. It's because they're against an absolute. They're yeah. thoroughbred relativists. Right. But the students yeah. are beginning to see that the emperor has no clothes. Yeah. So I'd, I'd sooner have the students because they're bombarded by faculty members uh, attacking their faith and so on. But you know, even uh, even at UCLA, we had a very distinguished faculty member who spent an hour and a half at mm -hmm. lunch with me to yeah. talk and uh, yeah. quite uh, open in his thinking and yeah. said how much he has changed over the years in Great. his own evaluation of all of this. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So with the say the students and a you know follow up but you, you you probably lecture and I've noticed occasionally yeah. you do Q&A or I don't know if oh, you yeah. do that all the mm -hmm. time and then um, even with some follow-up with some of the students are you seeing some we will be seeing that absolutely and yeah. we always do it follow up with Q&A in yeah. fact people come because of the Q&A okay yeah. so I present a talk and then the Q&A we call it an open forum yeah we don't do debates because I find debates are sort of not really productive yeah if you run into a clever person, he or she will steer you in the direction of their comfort and where they want yeah. to go, not the real issues, yeah. and there's a smoke screening type of thing. Yeah. But open forum, anybody can come up and ask a question, and you can either defend what you've said or, you know, you, yeah. f you flounder in the process. Uh, are we seeing results and following up? Incredibly so. Yeah tremendous response I don't think I've seen such response in 40 years mm. as students who write to us the transformed lives yeah. and how they keep up somebody will even come up to you and say you know I'm still a skeptic but you've got me thinking yeah at Dartmouth one person came started off saying she was a skeptic and by the time we finished she'd committed her life to Christ right up there at the front <laughs> of the auditorium Amazing. so we're seeing results and yeah. then the organizers do the follow-up yeah them. and if we can serve in any way we do yeah. it yeah that's fantastic yeah. so one last question how, how can we pray for you? I know you're busy. you got a, yeah. a, an unbelievable schedule. Well, you're well aware of the hazards of the ministry. Sure. You know, I think, uh, and after 40 years in it for myself and 29 years with our ZIM, the uh, most important thing to pray for is that we'll walk closely with the Lord. Yep. Number two, that God will be with our families because mm -hmm. I'm on the road so much. I really always pray for my family, for yeah. my wife, my children. Now I have three grandchildren, yeah. that God will keep them close to him. That is my my prayer. And then the ministry that will be wise. We've got a large team based in 10 countries yeah. now, about 30, 35 full-time apologists mm -hmm. across the globe, mm -hmm. that God will keep them humble, yeah. God will keep them faithful, and uh, making a difference. Yeah. That would be, these are some of the prayer requests I would have. Yeah, great. And I'm, I'm praying for you as well that God will use you to raise up, to continue to raise up new generations because yeah. we need we need new generations of apologists, don't we? We really do, and yeah. thank you for what you do. Yeah. You know, this is a historic church. In fact, I was talking to a gentleman from overseas driving in here telling him the story of Chucks yeah. founding this ministry coming in those turbulent 60s, right. 70s, and so on. It's yeah. really the work of God's grace in this part of the world and how it multiplied nationally and internationally. Yeah. So God bless you, too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Honored to be here. All right.